yeah, we need to turn it up a little bit in the back. That one? sponsored today by the Honorable Speaker Museum, the National Association of Armenian Studies and Research, or NASA, and the Organization of Istanbul, Armenia. We welcome this final opportunity to honor Professor Dadrian and celebrate this very unusual and very, very, very important life of an individual who has done very much for the Armenian community. He has been a longtime friend of the, of the museum, and we've hosted him for many times. In 2003, of his books to the museum, and in 2005, we sponsored a, um, uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award for him in, in cooperation with the Western Diocese. He started giving lectures at, at the museum in 2008, and Maggie Goshen, who's here, sponsored him and took care of him at her home many, many times. And we established a, almost a family bond with the professor, and over the last in 2011, the Arad home raised a question and tried very hard to get Professor Dadrian to come to California, stay at the home, and live out his last years here at the Arad home. Um, but somehow, he didn't want to leave his home in northern New York and stay there until he passed away. Later, we at the museum came up with the idea to digitize his entire suite of writings, and we undertook the challenge Maggie made many trips to North, Northern New York State to go through his papers, all of his documents, and we, we gathered those up and over eight years digitized them, and very soon they'll be available to the world to see all of his writings and all of his documents that he had in his library. Um, a great thank you also to the Arad Home for allowing us to have this event here in Dimension Hall, so thank you. Um, and so today we celebrate the life and the legacy of a very brilliant genocide scholar, Professor Dadrian. And thank you all for coming today. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Carla Garbedian, who is, a, in, who is part of the Armenian Film Foundation to serve as a Master of Ceremonies today. Thank you, Carla. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are today uh, honoring and celebrating academic achievements of Bahak and Dadrian. And as I look out to this audience, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Professor Sebu Aslanyan, who's here with us today, Professor Vadam Shamasyan, Dr. Marashlian, who's not here, but who is out of town and called in and said he wanted to pass on his condolences, Professor Hasni Badan, who's here, and I know Richard Hovanesyan wanted to be here, and he may still make an appearance, but um, uh, if we see him, we'll greet him. Um, as I look out to this audience, I see esteemed academics, and at least one of whom is a former student of Professor Dodrian's. 
I see people in community who have read his books and have used them to spread the word about the Armenian Genocide. I know there are, are activists joining us online watching this ceremony. Many of them have been inspired by Professor Dodrian's efforts to counter denial of the Armenian Genocide. And I see many of you who simply wanted to understand what happened and were educated and informed by Professor Dodrian's books. He spoke to all of us here, not least of all me, who is a filmmaker. His message affected not only those of us in this room, but a wide range of people around the world, including people in Germany, and yes, in Turkey too, where his books were published and sold. So this is a program not only to honor his body of work and achievement, it is also a mark of our collective gratitude for his persistent effort to understand the detail of the genocide and the many alliances and relationships that underpinned the genocide. We are grateful for his curiosity and his lifelong dedication. We'd like to start today's program with a prayer from His Eminence, Archbishop Hovnan Gergerian, the Very Reverend Father Muran Azmikian, Reverend Sirak Magazikshan, and Father Armenan Bedrosian. I invite you all to join us with the Lord's Prayer, and soon after, Mani will be singing Hor Jam Melody in honor of Dr. Bahak and Adrian. Hanun Hor, Yevurt Foy, Yevo Queen Serpa Men, Hair Mer, Hoer Guinnesses, Sur Pielitia Nunco, Yegese Arkai Junco, Yegitzing Gamco, Orbe Sergine Severgri, the Sat Smer Hanabazor, Durmezai Sor. Եվ թող մեզ զբարդիս մեր, որբես եվ մեկ թողունք մեր ոծ պարդապանած, եվ մի դան իրս մեզ իպործություն, այլ պրգյազ մեզ չար է, զիկոյ արկայություն և զորություն և պար Հավիդյանը Սավիդենից ամեն։ Եվ զխավության 
հոգվույն հանգուցելու ինք Քրիստոս Աստված արահանքից եւ ողորմություն եւ մեզ մեղավորած շնոր յազկավություն եւ ստողություն անցանած եւ երուսխաությանս ներ աճեցնով բազմանկյալով գույն աճեցնով սրգիչն մեր Քրիստոս ի ստանդար հարցն դասեստե եւ մեզ գեցուցե շնոր եւ ողորմության իրով ամենագալ ներ աստված մեր գեցո եւ օնիա դեր ողորմիա դեր ողորմիա դեր ողորմիա Քրիստոս որդի աստուծո անոխագալ եւ փարեկուտ քթա քո առաջարան սրոդ բթոքիս հանկուցյալ բաքնդադրյան պրոֆեսորին որը այս տոր հարկանքի դուք մատուցանանք հիշիադեր հավուր մեդիկալ սանկայության քո արա արժանի ողմության քավության եւ թողության մեղած թասավորյալ բայզարացո ընսուրպես քո հաշվոմյան թասուն զի դու ես դեր եւ արարիչ ամենսուն թադավոր գենթանյաս զմերելոց եւ քես վայրը փարք իշխանություն է բադիվ այժմ եւ միշտ հավիդյանս հավիդենից ամեն So we are going to enjoy some more music now because Professor Dodrian he he loved music particularly Armenian music and that's one reason we wanted to include music in this program um I'd like to invite Monique Mavikian to sing a little more thank you Can you just count to me then Ave Maria
like to invite the Army Quartet up to the stage, and while they come and um, get set up, um, I'd like to acknowledge Professor Hovhannisyan, who's joined us, and Professor Dekmejan, who's also, I didn't acknowledge before, hello, Professor Dekmejan. So we have our uh, fraternity of professors with us today. So now the Ani Quartet is going to perform um, six numbers.
thank you to the Ani Quartet. That was really beautiful. Um, in a slight change to Հազարդին որոնք նպատակավորված են եղել տեղասպանության մասին բարձրադայնելու եւ այն միջազգային հանրության կողմից ճանաչելի դարձնելու։ Մայր հայերենիքը նույնպես խորը երախտիկով է գնահատելով Տրդադրյանի ազգանեբեր գործունեությունը, շնորհել նրան դիտական ոլորտի աստիճաններ եւ պետական մշակութային բարձրադրի պարգևը։ Մոսես Խորենացի շքանշան։ Dr. Tatarian Shatak Muthovat Angina Hateli Jalan Mutsuna Barkamana Bolorins Hokiner. Your Eminence, Primate of the Western Diocese of the Armenian Church of North America, Archbishop of Nazarderian, Chair of Arab Eskijan Museum, Mr. Martin Eskijan, Chair of Arab Home Board Trustees, Mr. Joseph Benin. Honorable guests, with deepest carnivals in our hearts, we have gathered together to pay tribute to a true real Armenians to Dr. Bahadur Dadrian, who has dedicated his whole life and uplifted his voice for the whole mission of international recognition of the Armenian genocide. By his voluminous scholarly researches and efforts, Dr. Dadrian made a great contribution to the internalization of the Armenian greatest grief, spreading the word throughout different parts of the world by teaching in numerous European universities. Professor Dadarian was the scholar invited in 1995 to the British Parliament House of Commons to deliver a lecture commemorating the 80th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Due to his multilingual historical scientific researches, Dr. Dadarian has raised the study of the Armenian Genocide to the academic level. Professor was appreciated by the motherland as well and in inducted into high ranks of the Academy of Sciences of Armenia and at the same time decorated with Musa's Horonansi Medal, which is Armenia's highest cultural award. The bright memory and precious heritage of Dr. Dadarian will always remain in our hearts and souls. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Many of you know, uh, Professor Dadrian was born in Istanbul, and so uh, partly for that reason, uh, we would like to invite Dr. Ohanas Abedikyan, one of the hosts of this program, uh, to the stage. Dr. Abedikyan is representing the Organization of Istanbul Armenians.
Arkeli yıl sevinli ayrılığı ister. Bolsan Gülkan Hanım'a okçunun telefonları or aranın eski cihan yımnasını yetmeyersin darlık kaz paket uvaz aç su ki yere koyun ser masa tükçünü pera tek. Menk hamayn hayukyan yılmar tükkan okkin imas favori bolsa ayrılır su ki meçen. Menk borsun tutar denkmeni hayrına gitsin. Mer büyükkan bak bu antamı aşkari amına mert yap hayki kitna gönlenir mege. Sehaz panaket profesör Vahat Hanımoray Kadıryan'ı. An boş demeyen hayır sanat kanıtken ay polot sanat kanıtçunların masin helal tutuşunları görüyor. Ya bu aran sıkıtırken markan silahı çarakov çarakov yerlerdir. İl masin kocelik şart panelde haç incidir vaz aç karş karş baymanı şamov biri kohanan şart karş pahel im kosa kosa çocuğunu. Artık sen polotla iren masin pavagan dayı kocunları ünlen almayın. Ben o sahil ülkem var çıkan ortamları oroşatın amel dairesinin kişilerini de bana kal. Kazma gerebe diyerek olma. Yem ilanın ol, medalyon ol, medalyon ol mu? Arca borun aynı an seni. Orok yer kukat sana varın. Kıkaren yem ilanç yan kıkız o hem. Sen asma uçan hele bu zeta zor tutunların masin. Vakil moral kadar yan medalyon. Cene sahip çıkarışıp anını anmandak. Aysun medalyonu oroşatın. Araçtan kamalan o ilaşa girdi Türk Batmapan Profesör Kanel Akçamil dağ. Yani yanaca il aşağıdakilere yer mühmez korca gitsin. Ayş medalyonu, medalyonu düşüçünü September dastiği, Kervazar dastiğini gilagiyor. İl Karasınkin adı tohu bitirdir mi? Bolsa'nın ülkenin getirme. Yeri doyan çabın reçil. Ayş medalyonu düşüçünü bitik dörtlemi ammen dali. Meri bu ömür konuşmak seves tanıtken hep İspanyol'e ançanın değil. Yes, ançan, kısarı iddianını yem abelin profesör Tadıryan'ı hep zanıp yem mori kara pöyüken süre çıllalı. Zana zana arıtları o kıramirat yem tasakos şükürler tazmazı. Mülkler zanını ilen hamar hep uraf hükyan uraf hükyan hep ilmaylıyor hoşin ıskan çelip olsağı arı kanıtken. Adı haber ayısı hayırlı olup Arka aynı mesela, bunu ödemeyin ki şart kesilir hayırlı hosil, darinet darinet çel kosat. Yet bu hoşlar artık hayırlı hosil güzel. İl ıslatsat sana zan şikayetişen ürün kol, kol, menk bolsa hayırlı mersin pazar kol. Kolundan erken bir sınavoş derdiler yani, kolana vururken, bir kıza vururken, taslamı taslamak, askayın darma gel bütünlüğünü varsa çıkacağım, hopelinden atış için bu darma gel geçin. Yem şaşkı bir tur, yem haşıydı il papakin hamasay, uğar gitsin soruyan hünar, il papak ile gor, ayş haşıydı korsan türü sefes kanıtken eda zor tutunlarım. Yes, hişanakler olun, şart, haçmayan ne göbedik var kanses, tasak hoşuklarına emmiyün, yes sin de ambanesi fedai. Hova ne sak parayın, yes sen çevirin, gitmesin fedai ki koçası sak. Profesör, tarif okuyca. Ay oğlum aslı başmanı diyor ama miyim sen çok kat kurucu. Hayır şıma meşhur çok. Yavam ben bu kucak sar kaşım oldu. Hayır kadi yemsel aslan kucak masin. Bak magan ele uçuları yerevan adeno. Burbu tümleri ut. Helal sotu tümleri ut. Yedevan Türkleri ut. Kesin uğraş mahvan ispatlanık der ut. Aranç bakma uşağına gel ut. Gamba ut. Tunal fedai ödes. İl hames kesi bakma. یه سیم مارکای این بار دکان اتیو اسکای مارکای گانره مورسی نیست. مدرن هیاسانی هم راه داده چون این آجیل نه دو بیت داریم خیلی نیک یه بیت تاریخ پاکیون ور آجیلی مدت هنچی سرچون نرو مارکا یه سکوچی ور آجیل نرو می ماست دیزل نگاپه تو تاوله یه فونا یه سرچون رو میکشی بری من پولی کن خوب اخت سیله دی پروفسور من Bu avant ülkenin, avant ülkenin ve ülke bir adı atıcı bir kuklu da kat çampen, bir iş anlar genç, mişti şelo, kez abidiyan. Aslan sokit bu sabırı, bu sebebe çıktığın için, hişan adı arkaloğun sporu ülkem diyemezsin.
This program would not be complete without due attention to the many academic works of Professor Dajian. I'd like to invite Ruben Berberia, member of the board of directors of the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research, to tell us a little more about the professor's impressive bibliography. Ruben. Good afternoon. I'm uh, glad we're all uh, attending here with the clergy and various academics to honor the memory of Bahatun Dorad Adrian, who, as mentioned, was born in Istanbul on May 26, 1926, and he died on August 2nd, 2019, at the age of 93 in Geneseo, uh, which is in New York State. I'm going to briefly cover his education, uh, his employment, his publications, a uh, major movie, which you're gonna have the opportunity to see uh, uh, selected uh, sections of today, his uh, hearings and conferences, and the various awards that he has uh, garnered. He did not have a typical uh, background for the studies in uh, Armenian uh, genocide. Uh, he studied mathematics at the University of Berlin. He studied philosophy at the University of Vienna, international law at the University of Zurich, and he completed his PhD in sociology at the University of Chicago. He's known for the field of the comparative study of genocide, and he used an interdisciplinary perspective on genocide, using his background in sociology and law in addition to history. His knowledge of six plus languages helped him access uh, German, Turkish, Armenian, French, uh, English, and other sources. Between 1970 and 1991, he was employed as a professor of sociology at the State University of New York College at Geneseo, which is in New York. In 1990 and 91, he received a research grant from the Harry Frank Guggenheim Foundation as a director of a large genocide study project, the first of that organization, called the Proxy Factors of State Organized Genocidal Violence, the World War I Armenian Case. Since 1999, until his death in 2019, he was a member of the Zorian Institute's uh, Academic Board of Directors, and he served as director of genocide research. Now I'm gonna go over some of his publications. In 1986, in uh, a reprint from Holocaust and Genocide Studies, Volume One, uh, called uh, The Role of Turkish Physicians in the World War I Genocide of Ottoman Armenians. In 1989, uh, in the Yale Journal of International Law, Genocide as a Problem of National and International Law, the World War I Armenian case and its contemporary legal ramifications. So this is an example of the interdisciplinary perspective on the genocide that he took, which in this case covered law. Documentation of the Armenian genocide in Turkish sources, which appeared in Genocide, a critical uh, bibliographic review edited by Israel Sharni in 1991. The History of the Armenian Genocide, Ethnic Conflict from the Balkans to Anatolia to the Caucasus, which was published in 1995, and also appeared uh, in Italian in 2003 and Spanish in 2009, also other languages. The Comparative Aspects of the Armenian and Jewish Cases of Genocide, a Socio-Historical Perspective, uh, published in 1996, and again, this is an example of this comparative study of genocide in this case, uh, compared to the Jewish one. 
German Responsibility in the Armenian Genocide, a review of the historical evidence of German complicity, uh, published in 1996. And again, his language skills helped in uh, retrieving archival evidence for his uh, uh, novel, uh, for his volume. War for Genocide, Key Elements of Turco-Armenian Conflict, uh, was published in 1989. The Zorian Institute in 1999 published The Key Elements in the Turkish Denial of the Armenian Genocide, a Case Study of Distortion and Falsification. In this volume, Studies in Comparative Genocide, edited by Levon Chorbachian and George Sherinian, uh, there were several articles, including uh, some by Bahakan Dabrian and Tanar Akcha. Again, this is an example of the comparative study of genocide, and the volume covered the genocides of the Armenians, Ukrainians, Jews, Gypsies, Rwandans, Bosnians, and also topics of genocide, denial, and prevention. He had an almost 20-year uh, collaboration, I, I believe, his uh, most important collaboration with Tanar Akcham, which we're very happy uh, is here in the audience today and is going to uh, talk later on. Uh, as is his custom, Tanar Akcham typically publishes in Turkish first, but they had a collaboration with this volume called The Deportations and Massacres, Protocols of Military Tribunal, Trial of Union and Progress Party, 1919 to 1922, in Turkish in 2008. And it was followed up with the English version, Judgment at Istanbul, the Armenian Genocide Trials. Again, Rahat Kadajian from Tanar Akcham. And uh, there was also a French and other translations. Just to prove that this was the best and most important uh, collaboration that he had, this is a cover story from the Armenian International Magazine from 1999, Breaking the Wall of Silence, The Unspoken Fate of the Armenians. And we're going to see excerpts of the movie uh, coming up. The Wall of Silence, The Unspoken Fate of the Armenians, where a Turkish voice, Tanar Akcha, joins the call for Armenian genocide recognition, and a Dutch journalist, Dorothy Forme, documented the efforts fueled by the scholarship of the Armenian historian Bahakan Dabrian. I had the opportunity to attend the April 16, 1999 screening of this film at the Academy of Motion Picture, Arts and Sciences, Samuel Golden Theater. And what an event. I think it shocked the uh, local community. It certainly did for me, because up until that point, I didn't have Turkish friends. I didn't have... Uh, uh, an understanding of uh, what was going on in this film, and particularly the question and answer uh, period, uh, was very illuminating, and, and I remember it to this day. Here's another extraordinary picture. Bahakan Dadrian testifying in front of the Committee on International Relations of the House of Representatives in May 1976. On the front row are Dennis Papazian, Bahakan Dadrian, and Leo Sarkisian, uh, uh, Sarkisian. Also on the second row, uh, we have Avgis Stanjian of UCLA, Richard Hovanesian of UCLA, Shavash Korikian, and Aram Kalbuschan. Here we have Dr. Vahakadavian with the founding chairman of Nasser, Manu S. Yan. And here, Dr. Vahakadavian is speaking at the Library of Congress during the 2000 conference organized by the Armenian National Institute. And here we have Ruben Adalian, the director, and also Peter Balakian uh, on either side of him. Now I'm going to cover some of the awards that he has received. In 1995, he received the Citation of Merit on the 80th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide by President Levon de Petrosian. In 1998, he received the Moses Koranats Medal uh, from President Robert Kacharya. And thanks to Game Magazine, I have the actual picture here along with the medal. In 1999, he received the Mesro Mashtos Medal from the Holy See of Cilicia. In 2000, it was Nagorno Karabakh at the time, from the Artsakh Ministry of Education, he received the Italian Memorial Gold Medal. In 2000, 
He received the John Marshall Law School 100th Anniversary Conference Lifetime Achievement Medal. In 2001, he received the very best gold medal from Harvard University. In 2005, he received the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. In 2005, he received the International Association of Genocide Scholars Lifetime Achievement Award. In 2005, he received the U.S. Congress Medal of Esteem for Scholarship. In 2005, he received the Sub Sahag and Sub Mesro Medal and Encyclical from His Holiness Kaim Kim II, Gatrigos of All Armenians. In 2005, he received the National Academy of Sciences of the Republic of Armenia Gold Medal. In 2006, he received the Nansen Memorial Medal from the President of the National Academy of Sciences. In 2009, finally, uh, he received the President of the Armenian Republic Prize Gold Medal of Armenia, including a $10,000 uh, prize from uh, President Serge Sarkisian. In summary, Dr. Bahakan Dadrian made a very major contribution to the field of genocide studies, including comparative genocide studies, and also the interdisciplinary approach to genocide studies, including sociology, law, and history. And I've tried to demonstrate that the community at large and beyond uh, gave him some of the highest honors uh, and awards possible. Thank you. screen a short segment from the documentary that Ruben was just showing you, uh, Wall of Silence, which includes a, a very interesting meeting that Professor Dodrian had with someone in Germany. Örneğin resmi olarak çıkıp herhangi bir toplantıda 
Belki bir kırma olmuştur falan diyemeyecek insanlar. Özel konuşmalarda evet olmuştur böyle şeyler. Diyordur. Benim ana tezim şey, Türk toplumu hastadır. Yani biz hastayız ve bizim bir toplumsal terapiye ihtiyacımız var. Yani çünkü bizim tarihe ilişkin tutumumuz isteyip bir tutum değil. Buna işte e, histolojen oyhoza deniyor. İsterim ki nevrotik bir hastalık bu. Tabii ki olumlu olarak değil, yani yalnız termeli sorunu ekabiyebilir sorunlar. Tarihe yönelik kitap yapışlar. Bu tür konuların dinlendirilmesi bile bizde öfke, kızgınlık gibi duygusal tepkilere yol açabiliyor. Bu tepkilerin normal olmadığı, hem hastalıkla bir tutuma denk düşebileceğini iddia ettiğim. Bu nedenle sosyal bilimin bu sorunu kendi konusu yapması, bu hastalıkta olabilecek davranışların nedenleri ve ondan kaldırılması konusunda çözümler üretilmesi gerekir. Önerdiğim bir nedir, Türkiye'de çok yüklü bir kavram olmasını bilmeme rağmen sosyal bilimin bir nevi toplumsal doktorluk rolüne soyulmasıdır. İyileşmeyeceğiz, iyileşmemiz mümkün değil. Yani Türklerin tarihlerine yönelik açık konuşmayı başaramamaları Türklerin bugünkü hastalıklarının en nemlidir. Senin cesaretin için seni tebrik ederim. Artık bu cesaretten çok fazla kalmadı galiba. <gülüyor> Germany was Dr. Tanner Achjan, who has become, since then, Professor of History and the Kalustiana Lugar Chair of Armenian Genocide Studies at Clark University. We are very fortunate to have him here today at this event. He flew in especially for it, for which we are very grateful. Professor Achjan, I invite you to share your thoughts with us. Persistent searching, I was eventually able to acquire Latvian's address. This 
despite what I felt were slim hopes that something would come out of it, I nevertheless sat down and wrote the professor a letter explaining my ideas and internal research. Bu benim 40 yıl sonraki ilk Türkçe korrespondantımdır. This is the first Turkish language correspondence I've written in 40 years, began the letter I received from Dania. The letter has long since disappeared, but I can still see the first lines before my eyes, and it was the beginning of a friendship that would last for decades. He embraced the idea of a workshop with great enthusiasm, and the talk he gave there had a great impact on those present. In the end, he used to accept my proposal and the draft I prepared for the workshop would serve as the basis for my first book on Arbi Genocide. Throughout the period, throughout the period in which I was writing my doctoral thesis, Dagrian was always generous with his time and his assistance. During those years there was neither internet nor email, and as a result I corresponded with him regularly by phone. Thanks. As a Turk, I was naturally as hesitant to undertake such a venture. I was not entirely sure of myself, and I wanted answers for the hundreds of questions that blocked me so as to ensure that I didn't write or say anything incorrect. And that young was there, patient, answering every one of the questions, and sending me photocopies of the sources on which these answers were based. But there, was, there were so many questions that at one point he patience nearly exhausted. He wrote a brief note on the fax saying, you can see that on the uh, bottom of this fax, he says at the uh, bottom of it, uh, hopefully the questions have come to an end. <laughs> to this day, I have preserved all of the questions that I asked him and the answer that I received. It is due to that reason that I, did, I ended up coming to America. It was in 1999. I had no possibility working on the topic of Armenian genocide in Germany. I had a family that I needed to support. I sold out Dadrian and told him that I was obliged to look for another work. He did not receive this information passively, but instead actively obtained an invitation for me to the United States from Denis Papazian at Armenian Research Center of the University of Michigan, Denver. And just like that, I was able to continue my work on the genocide. May it not be seen here as speaking ill of the deceased, but the truth to be told, my mentor could not, could be somewhat precarious. Getting along with him was never an easy task for anyone. In one of his letters, he wrote once to me, I simply cannot work with another person. But to my immense good fortune, he ignored his custom in my case. He didn't dismiss my proposal to write both an English and Turkish language edition of the post-war Istanbul. Dadrian didn't just as an act, didn't just act as a mentor and helper in my academic life. He was also a guardian angel of my social life. Since I was the first Turkish academic who worked on Armenian genocide, I was received into Armenian circles with more than a little hesitation and suspicion. For his part, Dadrian expanded great effort attempting to dispel the prejudices against me among his fellow Armenians. I'm sure there are a lot among you who heard my name first from or only because of that. I know he used to call people and tell them about me. I have to say, I was like a son to him. He invited me to the gatherings he would attend and introduced me to these circles, Armenian circles. At one such gathering, the question was directed at me as to why I had decided to work on Armenian genocide. I replied that, yeah, it was actually due to, due to a coincidence. But Dadrian then interjected, no, and launched into an ardent defense of me and said, you know, this person, he has suffered greatly. 
He has sat in prison. He has been tortured. His family has suffered greatly. It is because of the suffering of his and own family and the torture that Taner knows and understand our suffering as Armenians. And it is thus no coincidence that he has decided to occupy himself with the Armenian genocide. He always longed for Istanbul, even Üsküdar. I greatly wanted him to come and visit Istanbul, but he was greatly afraid. If I go there, they will kill me, he would say. And there was nothing I could convince him otherwise. When I asked him, what food do you miss the most? He would also reply, ızgara köfte, or grilled meatballs. Whenever he would come to Hamburg, I would take him to the restaurant of Maraş or Oruç. He, could, he couldn't get enough. He would order several plates of ızgara köfte and eat them all. Oruç would joke saying, this man's appetite is unquenchable, unquenchable. His time in Vienna was a major turning point in his life, one which would eventually set him on the path to becoming a genocide scholar. He had originally come there to continue his studies in philosophy and mathematics, but in one of his courses, the instructor, upon learning that he was an Armenian, asked him if he had ever heard the name Franz Werfel or read the novel The Forty Days of Musada. That Rian replied that he was unaware of both the books and his author. The instructor was quite surprised to learn this, and but ultimately it was that Rian who was more surprised to hear of such a work. He immediately located a copy and read it cover to cover. Afterward, he couldn't sleep. He felt greatly embarrassed and ashamed. How was it that he could be so completely unaware of this horrible calamity that had befallen his people? Not a single member of his family or acquaintances had ever mentioned it to him, much less discussed it. He recalled during his childhood, older people would come to their house, close themselves in a room, and speak with each other and than weep. At that time, he had no idea of the reason for this cry of sadness. But now he grasped it. And so he abandoned his mathematical studies. Later, he would devote his life to the studying Armenian genocide and became the founding father of Armenian genocide studies. There is no need to speak of his contributions here. He created the field of his study. So much so that whatever discussion we will have today on Armenian genocide will be built on the body of knowledge that Dadrian has bequeathed us. He was a great scholar, but his heart always beat for his own people and for humanity in general. Dozens of times he told me that he frequently could not sleep at night. Even in his dreams, he told me, the cries of the children who had been killed of the people murdered in the deserts of Syria did not leave him. Dadrian had the rare ability to combine in his work the objective analytical eye of a scholar with the search for justice for those who had perished and for their descendants. It was this guiding principle that made him a such great scholar. Beyond his academic work, Dadrian was simultaneously active in working for the international recognition of Armenian genocide. It was Dadrian who in 1996 was responsible for achieving the declaration by 100 scholars, among them prominent Holocaust scholar Yehuda Bauer, opposing the Turkish government's denialist policies in regard to Armenian genocide. The declaration would appear in a great many United States newspapers. Similar initiatives would be repeated in the year 1998 and 2000. For Dadrian, scholarly works were simply a component of the larger struggle to have the traumatic events suffered by the Armenian nation recognized and to prevent future genocide. The renewed German-Jewish sociologist Norbert Elias Upon receiving the Adorno Prize in 1997, 1977, said during his acceptance speech that he carries a torch. 
that was lit by walls before him, that there would be others after him to carry it into the future. But in that young's case, there are not many people who lit the specific torch that he bore. In many ways, he was not only the bearer, but the actual creator. And I know that one of the Dadrian's ultimate desire was to see young scholar pick up the torch that he had worn so long and so far. What does Dadrian mean to me? Permit me to be very personal here and to repeat something that Dadrian already knew. I spoke to him. I told him the following lines when he was alive. My dear Hojang, my dear teacher, my dear mentor, as you know, one of the basic creeds of Sufism is the bond between master and disciple. Like the relationship of teacher and student, it is grounded upon shared interest in a subject and the willingness transmit knowledge. Teacher and students, however, need not share a personal relationship beyond mutual respect, courtesy, and cooperation according to their respective roles. After the training is completed, student and teacher may parts away. If they remain in contact, whether socially or professionally, their relationship will never be the same. The bond between master and disciple goes deeper than this, profound and personal. It involves not only the transmission of knowledge, but also more significantly spiritual wisdom. A Sufi disciple may bond with another master only by him of the priest. Disciple acknowledge the master, even when he starts teaching others in turn. Sayyid Hojan, my dear mentor, you were my master and will always remain so. In fact, you are the master of all of those whose heart beat for justice and humanity. I go to transmit the coming generations, the torch that you yourself have lit and carried forth, where you have gone, may you always rest. Time after time, 
commits a crime and gets away with it. It is in the nature of things that such perpetrators not only have no compunction of good things, but become even emboldened to repeat the crime. Therefore, the most single principle emerging from pre-genocidal history of Pekka Armenian country is what we call the fact of impunity accruing to the Turks. Because of this impunity, the Turks felt that the Armenians were fair game and that they could do it if they please. Here we see the beginning of the Turkish denial syndrome. As Turkey emerged victorious, the need to defeat for the messaging with the Allies, the need to feel victory and the need to make amends to Armenians evaporated as fast as the victorious Allies yielded to Turkish desire for peaceful settlement and Turkish terror, which then was signed in 1973 in Lausanne. It is my understanding that my, my claim that because the Turkish denial syndrome is rooted in the Turkish triumph of the Allies. And by the same token, I may say that let the Germans similarly emerge victorious at the end of World War II, there will be comparable, not similar denials about the Holocaust. To me, denial, the exercise of denial is a function of power. The need power to commit the crime of genocide need also a, a comparable power to deny in the aftermath of the crime. Turkish surgeons, Turkish physicians have given significant evidence in the Armenian period to indicate that hundreds of Armenian soldiers were subjected to experiments like laboratory animals. The main line of experimentation was the quest for remedy against typhoid. Perhaps the most critical aspect of the role of Turkish physicians in the enactment of the Armenian genocide is the role of two prominent Turkish physicians who occupied a paramount place in the Italian leadership and who, in my judgment, are the act authors of the Armenian genocide, namely the Turkish physicians Dr. Bayi Shaki and Dr. Nazir. Both of them were trained in Paris and <coughs> uh, became uh, very fanatical enemies of the Armenians. And it is my knowledge, based on uh, archive research, that these two people were pivotal for the ultimate decision making for the Armenian genocide. The Turkish court martial are a very significant development in Ottoman Turkish history for two reasons. First of all, for the first time in Ottoman history, the highest ranking authorities of the Ottoman government as well as the leadership of the younger Ethiopian party were taken to task for criminal acts against the minority. This is unprecedented in Turkish history. The Turkish court marshals have a very significant meaning for the evaluation of the Armenian genocide in this sense. Even though they failed to exact retributive justice towards the perpetrators, they were able to document the Armenian genocide by recourse to a number of official secret telegrams which were obtained by the inquiry commission affiliated with the Turkish military tribunal. In other words, even though the punishment was less than uh, satisfactory because the arch perpetrators were allowed to flee the country and only three minor officials were executed through hanging, the Turkish court marshal managed 
to acquire and utilize during the proceedings the mass of documents to which the Armenian genocide is uh, documented and demonstrated to have been a premeditated crime conceived, organized, and executed by the Italian party leadership through the agencies of the Ottoman government. This court martial document has extraordinary significance for the following reasons. Number one, it comes from a deputy of the Turkish parliament, more specifically the Chamber of Deputies. And moreover, the, the, the man who is making this admission is not only a deputy, but also a lawyer by profession. Therefore, the quality of his evidence and testimony has unusual significance. Secondly, it indicates uh, another method of genocide in the Armenian case of World War I genocide, namely, apart from primitive instruments such as daggers, spades, swords, swords the perpetrators used the streams, rivers, and in particular the Black Sea for massive drowning operations. And finally, the most important feature of this document is that it comes from an eyewitness, eyewitness who is not only a Turk, but an official of the Turkish government, a parliamentarian, a deputy who emphasizes in his own words that he saw with his own eyes this nightly operation involving women and children being taken to the high seas and being drowned. This document, dated December 7, 1915, and identified as document letter R14089 from the German Foreign Office in Berlin, has unusual value in terms of documenting the specific features of the Armenian genocide. In this document, German ambassador Metternich makes several revelations of significance for the understanding of the Armenian genocide. First of all, he reveals that contrary to repeated claims by historians, apologists, deniers, and even Armenian scholars that Istanbul was saved from the ravages of deportation and massacre, that the population of Istanbul was left more or less intact, Ambassador Metternich reveals in this document that he had a conversation with the police chief of Istanbul, Betri, where the, of, where the attributes of the minister in the Turkish government and who supervised the deportation and massacre of the intellectuals of Istanbul, Betri disclosed, confided to the German ambassador that until that point, December 7, 1915, surreptitiously two nightly operations, 30,000 Armenians were removed from Istanbul and most of them disappeared. Metternich begs his superiors in Berlin to keep this information top secret. When this document reached the foreign office in Berlin, three high-ranking officials in the German government uh, made marginal comments to the document. One of them was Deputy Foreign Minister or Under Secretary Silverman, the other was Foreign Minister Yago, and the third one, which is the most important, was Chancellor Batman Hole, which is comparable to the Prime Minister in our understanding. Batman Hole, after saying that uh, it is unheard of that an ambassador proposes to his government that our government should expose the crimes of an ally in the midst of the war. This cannot be done. We need Turkey. Therefore, we have to stick with the Turkey to the end of the war, even, even if such uh, adherence to Turkey, in spite of the barbarities of the massacres and deportations, even if that 
amounts to the extermination or annihilation of the Armenian people, irrespective if as a result Armenia is ruined or destroyed. Thank you, everyone. Please join us outside for a reception. Thank you for every, everyone of you for coming. We appreciate it. 